Hi, my name is Diane Schuster. In this demonstration, I'm going to configure a package that uses CozyRock's file transfer task to download files from a remote SFTP server to a local server. After I successfully download each file, I will move it to a different folder on the remote server so it won't be downloaded again the next time the package is executed. I don't know when files will be placed in the folder from which I'm downloading files, and I don't want to download partial files. Therefore, I'll use a filter to avoid including partial files in the list of files to download. I'll configure the package so that it uses a success constraint to only move files on the remote server if the file was downloaded successfully. I will use a failure constraint to write the name of the file and a timestamp to a SQL Server table if the download of the file fails. So first I want to show you the files on the remote server that I want to download. And um, it's not really on a remote server, it's on my computer, and I'm using Bitvice to um, simulate an SFTP server on my computer. So here you can see we have one file that has part in its name, so that'll be excluded from my list because I'm going to use a filter. And after we successfully download each of the files, they will be moved to this folder. And uh, you can see that's empty right now. And I also want to show you the folder where we're going to download it on my local server or computer is right here. I'm going to be using a file connection manager to access this folder. And then to access this folder on the remote server, I'll be using the SSH connection manager. So I also want to show you, I've already set up the connection managers. I'm going to start with the SSH connection manager. Of course, that's to go to the remote server. And then the receive Excel files uh, connection manager is a file connection manager. That just points at that folder I showed you. So here's how the SSH connection manager is set up. You can test the connection there. And then this is for the second portion of this demonstration where I'm going to write the names of files that fail when I download them. I'm going to write their names to a SQL Server table. So this is just pointing to a, uh, a table. And then I already have the variables set up. There's several of them. So initially, I'm going to get a list of all the files in that folder on the SFTP server. So this is an object variable. And then I'll jump down to move file name. So each time I go through a for each loop, it's going to put the name of the next file in the list into this variable. And then uh, we have the server old path. So this is where the files reside initially. So here's what it uh, evaluates to, the expression there. So that's how we're going to loop through each of the files in the folder. And then uh, the server new path has basically the same expression, except it's putting them in a different folder. And now I'll go back to uh, the insert statement. So this is for the writing the uh, failed files into that SQL Server table. So I just created a statement in an expression. And uh, so it's going to use, you know, the move file name variable is the current name of the file that's being processed and that failed. So we'll start out by dragging the file transfer task onto the canvas here. All right, I named it get list of files to download. And the action here is called get remote files list, which is the last 
action to choose there. And then we'll be reading that list into our file list object variable. And we'll use the SSH connection manager. And I could use a variable here, um, but I'm just going to point it at the download these files folder. If you wanted to use a, um, a variable for that, you'd click on expand options up there. And then you would have this uh, property show up is remote variable. And I'm going to leave that set to false. And then we want to apply that filter, oops, which is not in my clipboard. So I'll go grab that. Paste it here. So I do want to show you that we um, now have the ability to test your flea expression. If you're trying to set up a filter, you don't have to execute your package and try to figure out what's wrong. Is it the filter or is it something else? Um, now you can just test your filter here and make sure that you get it right before you ever get to the point where you're going to execute your package. So since I'm using the name property, it tests it against this sample. And it says down here that that is true, that it uh, does not have part in its name. All right, so we're done with that. Now we'll get the for each loop container. Connect the arrow and I'm going to process each file. That's a nice short name. And so for collection, we're going to oops, change that to uh, for each ADO enumerator, since we'll be using our object variable file list. And then here, we're going to put each file name into move file name. Now we'll get file transfer task again and put it inside the for each loop container. So this one will be used to download one file. We'll go in and configure this one. And so now the action will be receive files. And our connection manager for the local folder is called receive Excel files. And for the remote parameter, we're going to use the SSH connection manager again. And here we want to use a variable. So we change is remote variable to true. And then we choose the what's called the server old path, because that's where the files are initially. We don't have any subfolders, don't need to use a filter. And so that's all done. Now we'll use the file transfer task one last time. This time we're going to use it to um, move the files after they've been successfully downloaded. So um, all right, let's go in and edit that. So this time uh, it's not actually called move. Um, files, it's rename remote file. Does the same thing as moving in the, our case. And now I want to expand the options there because we're going to be using a variable for the old name and the new name. So we'll change this to true. Use the variable that we have set up for the old path. And then here's for the new path. All 
All right, so now that's all configured. Whoops, invalid connection. Oh. I thought I chose that. All right, now it's all set up. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go ahead and execute it now before we set up the error handling. So here we go. All right, so it says it was successful. And we'll go look at the folders. So this used to have all the files in it that we're going to download. Now the only one left is the partial one. And you can see that the rest of them got moved to this folder. And also we downloaded them, of course, to the local folder. So now I'm going to get into how to set it up to deal with uh, failures and to record those failed files in a SQL table. So I'm going to fix up these folders again so that we can execute the package with the error handling set up. So I'll be right back. The way I'm going to cause the download of some of the files to fail is I'm going to get a list of files from a different folder than the one that we're actually downloading files from. So here there's the six files that we're going to actually be downloading. And over here is a folder that has those same six files. Of course, the one with part in the name will not be downloaded, but it also has two additional files that don't really exist in the folder that we're going to be downloading from. So of course, that'll cause a failure. So we'll go back to Visual Studio now. And this is the file transfer task where we get the list. So I'm going to point that at the wrong folder that has the two extra files in it. And now I'm going to go over to the event handler. And I need to set it up so that we can use constraints, success versus failure constraints, to um, direct the flow based on whether it was successful or not. So here's the download one file task. And that is the first file transfer task inside the forage loop container. So that's where the failure is going to happen, if it's going to happen. And this is already set up to on error for the event handler. So I click on this link, and now we have the ability to use those constraints. So I'll go back to the control flow canvas. And OK, so if we have a failure, we want to write the name of the file and the uh, timestamp of when the failure occurred into a SQL Server table. And I want to show you the insert statement, which I have changed a bit from the beginning of this video. So um, at first, I was only going to record the name of the file, but now I'm also recording the timestamp. So that's what that variable looks like now, the expression in that variable. All right, so. So now I'm going to drag a second arrow from download one file and I right mouse click on it. And here is where I can say, yeah, if there's a failure, this is where I want you to go. So the green arrow is where the flow will go if it's successful. And that, of course, moves the file to a different folder on the remote server. But if we have a failure with the download, we'll go here. So we'll go in and configure the execute SQL task. Of course, we'll use the OLEDB connection manager. And then our SQL source type is going to be that variable that I just showed you. And we'll scroll down and find the insert statement variable. And then we'll set up the parameter mapping. So we need to set it up to use the file name that we were working with at the time the failure occurred. So that's the move file name variable. And then the file type is going to be envircare. And this is zero. All 
All right, so um, I'm going to execute the package now, but it will fail because there is something else that I need to set up to make the package work. So what happened here is that the first file was a problem because it didn't actually exist. So we got an error and it redirected it over here to the execute SQL task. And I'll show you it is in uh, the table. It was written there. So that's the very first file. I'm going to go ahead and clear out the table for our next run. I'll do this. Okay, so you can see the table is clear now. So um, what happens is that the error, even though we're redirecting it to a different uh, task, it still propagates to the parent and the parent says, oh, there was an error, fail the package. So I'll show you how to fix that. So down here in the variables, I click on the variable grid options, and I click on show system variables. And now we have a bunch of variables to look at, and I need to click on event handler in order for this variable I'm looking for to be visible. So let's scroll down and it's still not visible because I just realized that, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Because we have to actually have the download one file event handler selected and now we'll be able to see that propagate variable. There it is. So you can see it's set to true. So it's it propagated the error up to the parent. So we set it to false. It's like the parent doesn't need to know about this. We have handled the error situation and we want to continue and uh, go ahead and download everything that we can. We're not going to just stop because there's a problem with one or two files. So I'm making this smaller again to get it out of the way. So now we should be ready to execute and have a success. All right, so it says it executed successfully. We'll stop debugging. And I'll show you over in the table that we now have the two files that didn't really exist here, as well as timestamps for each of them. And if we look at the execution results here, uh, you can see the two failures here, the two errors, I should say. And uh, but it continued to execute. So I'll show you that we did get the files downloaded that should have been downloaded and the files were moved from this folder, except for the one that has part in the name, to this folder where we wanted them moved to once they were downloaded successfully. So that's pretty cool, huh? Thank you for watching. If you want to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.